Let's talk about the basic types of sets. This is the pre-break session of lesson number two, still concerned on sets. But here, specifically, we are going to talk about the basic types of sets. In our module, we're able to talk about 10 basic types of sets. And now, let's. Our, this is our time for us to examine the given items here. So we are to determine whether these sets here are classified into the correct form of sets. So the, number one, we have set of fractions between one and two. So we need to de determine whether it's a finite set or whether it's an infinite set. Number two, it's between empty or unit set. For the next item here, we have pairs of a pair of sets, and we are going to determine first if they are equal or equivalent, and then let us determine if they are joint or disjoint. And finally, for the last item, we are going to draw the subsets of the given set, come up with the power set, and then later on determine the cardinality of the power set. So for number one, we have here the set of fractions between one and two. If we talk about either finite or infinite set, it concerns on the number of elements that could be found in that given set. Or in the other term, we are asking about the cardinality of the given set. Finite means we can just count. Or there is a limited number of elements in the given set. And definitely when we talk about infinite set, we have infinitely many elements. If we talk about fractions between 1 and 2, we first consider the first example 1 and 1 half. We also have 1 and 1 third and 1 and 1 fourth and so on and so forth. As you can see, we have ma infinitely many fractions between 1 and 2. So the answer to number 1 is that it is considered to be an infinite set. For number two, we are going to determine whether it's an empty set or a unit set. It's still talking about the cardinality of the sets. But specifically, when you say empty set, that means that the said set has no element. But if we talk about unit set, we have one element for that given set. So we have here the set of countries that start with Q. As of the moment, we only have one, and that is actually Qatar. So we only have one element. That would mean number two is an example of a unit set. Let's consider this as number three. And we need to give two answers here. The first answer would either be equal or equivalent. And the second answer is between determining whether it's a joint or disjoint sets. If we talk about equal sets, the elements for both sets should be the same, regardless of what order the elements are written. Same quality. If we talk about equivalent sets, we are asking about the same number of elements. In other terms, same quantity. So let's look at set C. Set C has elements 1, 2, 4, and 6. Set D has elements 2, 3, 4, 5. Between equal and equivalent, we could just automatically erase the term equality of sets because we notice that there are elements in set C that are not found on set D and vice versa. Here, 1 is found in set C, but it's not found on set D. because our concern for equality is only concerned about the same quality or same elements. Since we have elements not found in both sets, we can crash equality out. So is it safe for us to say that these two sets are equivalent? Let's look at the number of elements or the cardinality of each set. The cardinality of set C, we have one, two, three, four, four elements. For set D, you have one, two, three, four, four elements. So we have four elements for set C and four elements for set D. We have the same number of elements. This is the time that it's safe for us to say that set C and set D, in terms of equality or equivalence, it is actually considered to be 
an equivalent set or equivalences. They are equivalent sets rather. Now, as for the second option, either joint or disjoint, simply look at the presence of the elements. If we talk about joint sets, both of these sets should share a common element or common elements. If they do not share a common element, that would mean two sets are disjoint. Looking at set C, we have elements 2 and 4, which are also present in set D. This would mean that set C and set D share common elements, two elements in the form of number 2 and number 4. This is now safe for us to say that they are actually considered to be joint sets. So we have discussed already infinite and finite, empty and unit, equivalence, equivalent and equal sets, joint and disjoint sets. The last item for this pre-break session is to determine the subsets, power set, and the cardinality of the said power set for set G at the bottom, which is set is a set containing the letters in the word go. Take note that if we talk about subsets, we have three different subsets. But first, let us try to write set G in its roster form. Why? Subsets are considered to be smaller sets of the given set as it contains few or all elements. Be before we could determine what are the elements of these subsets, we need to make sure first what are the elements of the given set. So writing it in a roster form will help us determine what are they. So first, let us write set G in its roster form. And since set G it contains X, such as X is a letter in the word go, the elements are letters G and then O. So we only have two elements there. From here, we can now draft the number of subsets of the given set. The, there is a formula in determining the number of subsets, and it's given to be this one, 2 to the power of n. n here corresponds to the number of elements or the cardinality of the given set. Here, we have set G containing letters G and O, and we have two elements. That would mean N is equal to 2. Let me move this out here so that we could write more um, items here. So if N is equal to 2, simply substitute N in the given formula. So you have 2 squared, which is actually 2 times 2, and will lead us to 4. This tells us, tell us rather, that there are four subsets of the given set. Why do we need to consider first determining the number of subsets? The main reason is that we are guided if we have already conducted duplications of subsets and the like. So we have four only subsets here. The first type of a subset is called to be a proper subset. A proper subset is when few, not all, only few elements of the given set are found in that said subset. The first proper subset is given to be the set containing only the letter G. In short, the unit set containing G. This is a proper subset since this only has one element as compared to the given set which has two elements. The other subset, proper subset rather, or more specifically, is a set containing O. These are proper subsets as they contain only one element. So we are down to our last two since we only need four subsets here. The next form of a subset is the set itself. It is called to be the improper subset since it is equal to the given set. When I say equal, it is similar. It is the, sa it's the same as the given set. And this is considered to be our next type of set called to be our improper subset. 
improper because then again, it contains all the elements of the given set. So that would also mean that a set is also a subset to itself. Again, it, it is also uh, equivalent to saying that the set is also a subset of itself. Now we only have, we already have three here. We only have four, we only need four subsets. The last type of subset is considered to be the trivial subset. And that is actually the empty set or, or the other symbol or the other term used for the empty set is null set. As to why, sub, why empty set is considered to be a subset of any set, it conforms to the explanation that this set here is a collection. And this collection may also contain nothing. That is why it's considered to be a trivial subset. So we already have one, two, three, and four. We have reached this number, and these are already our subsets. So the first task is to determine the subsets. We're done with that. The next is the power set. Power set is considered to be a set form when we combine all subsets, or we consider the subsets to be the element of that set. There are many notations to, for a power set. Others will just use P of G, okay? And that's already okay. Others will use the, this symbol, but they're, they're just the same. P of G, that would mean the power set of set G. Again, the power set is a set, not just a collection, not just, do not just write the subsets, but it should be a set. In short, it will look like this. It is a set, close, uh, uh, open and close braces should always be present there. And write all the sets here one by one. So we have here, sorry, write all the subsets rather. So we have subset, a set G, separate the comma, set O, separate by a comma, the set itself, comma, and then finally, empty set. Choose only one of the symbols. You may use the empty set symbol or the null set symbol. They, they mean the same thing, but never combine them. Do not combine them as the subset here is only the empty or the, or the null set symbol, not the combination of both. So let us just use the null set here, or you can use again empty set. So this is now our power set. It is a set containing the subsets, the four subsets. So in case that there would be more than four subsets, depending on our calculation here, so you also need to place everything inside the set. Not forget the notation for the set, as the power set is also considered to be a set. Finally, we are down to the cardinality of the power set. Our process earlier of determining the number of subsets with which ye yielded to four is also the formula in getting the cardinality of the power set. Why? Why are they connected? First, this formula determines the number of subsets. And the, car the, pa the power set contains the number of subsets. So definitely, the cardinality of the power set is also this formula here. So the answer for the cardinality of the power set is also for cardinality of the power set is equal to four. Do not mistaken this cardinality here by the cardinality we referred earlier. This two here is the cardinality of the given set. But the cardinality of the power set asked here is the cardinality of the power set that we have just made for subsets, for elements of the power set. This is the, the, the explanation for this pre-break session. Goodbye, everyone.